In this series, I've covered a lot of lesser known mysteries, things that many people have probably never even heard of. In this video, that changes. In this video, we'll be covering the Blue Wizards, one of Tolkien's greatest mysteries. Who were they, what happened to them, and how did their identities and their roles evolve throughout Tolkien's writings? The Istari, also known as Wizards, play a prominent role in the Lord of the Rings. Gandalf the Grey serves as one of the main protagonists, Saruman the White serves as one of the main antagonists, and although Radagast the Brown does not physically appear outside of a story told by Gandalf, he is mentioned several times. But in the Lord of the Rings, during the confrontation with Saruman at Orthanc, Saruman mentions that there are in fact five wizards. So who the hell were these other two wizards? Funnily enough, when Tolkien wrote The Lord of the Rings, not even he knew who these two other mysterious wizards were. Saruman's line was just a throwaway line, alluding to world building that hadn't actually been built yet. It wasn't until 1954, five years after Tolkien had completed The Lord of the Rings, when Tolkien actually sat down and started to flesh out the identity of these two other wizards. In a passage that now appears in the Unfinished Tales, Tolkien mentions the arrival of five wizards during the Third Age, and mentions that two were clad in sea blue. He then goes on to write this. Of the blue, little was known in the West, and they had no names save Ifrin Luwin, the blue wizards, for they passed into the East with Curanir, but they never returned, and whether they remained in the East, pursuing there the purposes for which they were sent, or perished, or as some hold, were ensnared by Sauron and became his servants, is not now known. In the Unfinished Tales, we also get snippets of a so-called Council of the Vala, in which they selected the Istari that would travel to Middle-earth. In these somewhat illegible passages that Christopher so kindly put together, we learn that one of the Blue Wizards was named Alatar, and that he was in service to the Vala Orome. He is stated as being one of the first two wizards to step forward, the other being Kurumo, aka Saruman. We then learn that the other blue wizard is his friend, named Palando, who also serves Orome, but Tolkien initially floated the idea of having him serve Mandos and Nienna. Christopher then speculates that the reason why the blue wizards were sent east was due to their master, Orome's, own familiarity with the east of Middle-earth. I do want to point out that The Unfinished Tales was released in 1980, 25 years after the publishing of The Return of the King, and the conclusion of The Lord of the Rings. So for 25 years, fans of the series knew absolutely nothing about the Blue Wizards, not their names, or even the fact that they went into the East, and this was a mystery that was on the minds of fans of the series even back then. Evidence of this comes from Letter 211 in 1958, in which Rona Bear, who corresponded regularly with Tolkien and went on to become a Tolkien scholar herself, asks about the Blue Wizards. Tolkien's response is quite vague. I really do not know anything clearly about the other two wizards, since they do not concern the history of the Northwest. I think they went as emissaries to distant regions, east and south, far out of Numenorean range, missionaries to enemy-occupied lands, as it were. What success they had I do not know, but I fear they failed, as Saruman did, though doubtless in different ways, and I suspect they were founders or beginners of secret cults and magic traditions that outlasted the fall of Sauron. As you may have noticed, no names mentioned, but much like with the 1954 passage that would eventually appear in the Unfinished Tales, Tolkien seems set on the fact that they went into the East and failed in their mission, either by perishing or being corrupted, possibly even by Sauron. And in an alliterative verse poem, Date Unknown, Tolkien mentions that of all the Istari, only Gandalf returned to Valinor. So after 1980, all that was known about the Blue Wizards can be summarised fairly quickly. Their names were Alatar and Palando. They arrived in 1000 of the Third Age alongside the other Istari. They travelled into the east of Middle-earth accompanied by Saruman, but whereas Saruman returned, the Blue Wizards did not. In the east, they either perished or strayed from their task, perhaps being corrupted by Sauron, or perhaps falling in some other manner, and founding secret cults and magic traditions. But this all changes. In the final years of Tolkien's life, he reimagined large parts of his legendarium, including the Blue Wizards and the roles they played in Middle-earth. 
These later writings were published in 1996 as part of the final volume of the history of Middle-earth, Peoples of Middle-earth, which is an absolute goldmine of interesting stuff not found anywhere else. One such note is this. No names are recorded for the two wizards. They were never seen or known in the lands west of Mordor. The wizards did not come at the same time. Possibly Saruman, Gandalf, Radagast did, but more likely Saruman the chief, and already over mindful of this, came first and alone. Probably Gandalf and Radagast came together, though this has not yet been said. What is most probable? Glorfindel also met Gandalf at the Havens. The other two are known to have existed by Saruman, Gandalf, and Radagast, and Saruman in his wrath mentioning five was letting out a piece of private information. Here we have the first inkling that what we originally learned about the wizards may not have been true, most prominently their times of arrival. Also, interestingly enough, the blue wizards were supposed to have been a secret. In a follow-up note, described by Christopher as even more difficult to read, we learn of the substantial changes that Tolkien made to the Blue Wizards. The other two came much earlier, at the same time probably as Glorfindel, when matters became very dangerous in the Second Age. Glorfindel was sent to aid Elrond and was, though not yet said, preeminent in the war in Eriador. But the other two Astari were sent for different purpose, Morinetar and Romastamo, Darkness Slayer and East Helper. Their task was to circumvent Sauron, to bring help to the few tribes of men that had rebelled from Melkor worship, to stir up rebellion, and after his first fall, to search out his hiding, in which they failed, and to cause dissension and disarray among the Dark East. They must have had a very great influence on the history of the Second Age and the Third Age, in weakening and disarraying the forces of East who would both in the Second Age and Third Age otherwise have outnumbered the West. Another note, which appears in the recently released Nature of Middle-earth, reads like this. His gathering of armies had not been unopposed, and his success had been much less than his hope. But this is a matter spoken of in notes on the Five Wizards. He had powerful enemies behind his back, the East, and in the Southern lands to which he had not yet given sufficient thought. As you can see, almost everything about the Blue Wizards was changed. Instead of being referred to as Alatar and Palando, they are called Morinetar, Darkness Slayer, and Romastamo, East Helper. Instead of arriving in 1000 of the Third Age alongside the other Istari, they arrive in the Second Age, sometime before the year 1600. And instead of wholly failing in their task of fighting against Sauron, they are instead said to have been reasonably successful, creating enough resistance against him so that his plans were hindered. We also learned that they actively hunted Sauron after his defeat in the Second Age, which might explain why it took over a thousand years for Sauron to properly re-establish himself. If anything, these changes help flesh out the east and south of Middle-earth. Although Tolkien does hint at it not being the case throughout his writings, it's easy to look at places like Rune and Harad as entirely monolithic, lands that are completely covered by darkness and have been for thousands of years. However, the success of the Blue Wizard paints an entirely different picture, and even as Sauron's forces fought against the West, they were forced to deal with armies, rebels, uprisings, and lands in the East too. Although these places are never fleshed out, it's implied that there are many differences there among peoples and places, much like it was in the West as well. Unfortunately, Tolkien still does not tell us what may have happened to the Blue Wizards. In that poem, he says Gandalf was the only one to return, and I'm unsure of the date of that poem and whether it would have been changed. It's possible that it would still hold true and that the Blue Wizards never returned from the East. Perhaps they stayed after the Fourth Age, or perhaps they found success for a time and were finally dealt with by Sauron towards the end of the Third Age. I guess we will never know. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed it or at least found it interesting. I know the Blue Wizards are one of the most popular topics for Tolkien YouTubers, and I usually try to stay away from done to death topics, but I feel like I couldn't have a series about Middle Earth mysteries without addressing one of the greatest mysteries. In any case, I hope you learned something new. Cheers, farewell, and remember, whatever your name is, it will never be as cool as Darkness Slayer.